Now, there's a new boss at the helm of the troubled National Youth Service. Matilda Sakwa has been appointed National Youth Service Director General in an acting capacity. Until her appointment, she was serving as Machakos County Commissioner. Sakwa replaces former NYS Director General Richard Dubai, who is facing corruption charges. Question is, will she be the magic bullet to restore faith in the institution that has been riddled by one corruption allegation after the other? That is the question that is on the minds of millions of Kenyans out there looking at several issues that have been raised with respect to NYES. So will she be that magic bullet? Let's wait and see. Now, the family of... Uh, all right, we'll get you that story. That's a story of a missing girl from Gara Girls. But another girl secondary school is on the spot this evening of a student's riots. Nia Girls High School in Sayre County has been closed indefinitely following students' unrest on Monday night. The students went on rampage protesting high-handedness of the boarding master. The unrest at Nia comes just a day after Kisumu Girls High School in Kisumu City was closed indefinitely over the same. The school administration is yet to make a formal communication over the closure. We did mention that another girls' secondary school is on the sport that is near girls, and that forms the basis of a big question tonight on Kate and Prime. You're asking you, what do you think is driving unrest in girls' secondary schools in Kenya? What do you think is driving that unrest? Um, it would be interesting to hear from parents as well who have children in secondary schools. Tweet us at KTN News at KTN Kenya. You can also tweet me at Linda Ogutu. Kenya Revenue Authority is this evening on the spot after ESCC detectives seized eight containers loaded with ethanol at a warehouse in Kibarani, Mombasa. Ironically, the consignment was meant for destruction in 2016. The raid was conducted this evening by the deputy head of ESCC Mombasa Regional Office, Salat Abdi Ali. The value of the ethanol in containers is worth 40 million shillings. The ethanol seized in 2016 was condemned by KEBS and needed to be destroyed under strict supervision from all government agencies. It is not clear why the consignment was still being held at the warehouse, allegedly with the knowledge of Kenya Revenue Authority. Uh, we stopped these containers yesterday. The containers were, four of them, in fact, were on the verge of being released after sold, being sold at a custom warehouse auction. The information we have is contained contraband goods, which is ethanol, which was misdeclared. The consignment was stopped for destruction in 2016, but now mysteriously being sold again to the, and released to the market. So these are the eight, these are the, the four is part of the eight containers which are behind us. We are conducting investigation 
Of course, this uh, must have been done with the collusion of uh, government officials, uh, specifically KRA. So we are conducting, we have just started an investigation, and we shall let you guys know the progress in due course. In the continuing crackdown on contraband, detectives drawn from Parkland have this evening discovered some 16,000 bags of what is believed to be contraband sugar from a warehouse in Nairobi's Isli area. The bags were discovered at a go-down on First Avenue in Isli area of Nairobi. Investigators have since sealed off the area for further investigations. In the continued recent wave of contraband in the country, this will be the third consignment of illicit goods to be seized in Isli. On 4th of last month, detectives seized some 20,000 bags of more contraband brown sugar in Isli Section 3. But the talk will begin when Interior Cabinet, Sec Cabinet uh, Secretary Fred Matiagi claimed that investigations had established presence of mercury in the consignment. Busia Governor Sospita Ojemong now says he is ready and willing to provide the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions, Nuruddin Haji, with substantive information over corruption allegations that have been leveled against him. This comes a day after the DPP approved the prosecution of the Governor Ojemong and nine other individuals over an alleged loss of 8 million shillings through questionable contract. Our Western Region-based reporter, Willie Lisige, is keeping tabs on this story for us. Embattled Busia County Governor Sospita Ojamong emerged hours after the Director of Public Prosecution, Nurdin Haji, ordered his arrest and prosecution alongside nine other officials. Speaking in Budalangi, the ODM Governor vowed to table evidence in what he termed as a beneficial project to the people of Busia. Hakuna pesa mbao ilitumika katika solid waste management busia ambayo ilipotea. Kwanza kaunti ya busia ndiyo ilipata faida kushinda ule mfadili ambayo tulukua tumepata. But Governor Ojamong remained adamant that no money was lost. He says the 8 million shillings was paid to Madame Ray Enterprise towards solid waste management and paying the casual cleaners. According to the governor, the money was paid to Madame Ree Enterprise in two installments of four million shillings each through a Kenyan account and termed reports that the money was channeled to a Germany account as baseless. At present, I require me to make a German. Iyo ni maneno ya wongo. Tulikuwa tunafanya Madame Ree biashara akiwa mefungua account katika family bank kisumu. Tatu limilipa mara mbili milioni moj milioni ina mara ya kwanza milioni ingine mara ya pili. Tatu kap Akatuandikia report ya feasibility study ya solid waste management busia. Pia akawakota takataka busia county, taunzote kwa mwaka moja. Instead, he's lamenting over his impending arrest, terming it as a witch hunt. Uh, Siogopi, hata wakini ita kesho naenda. Lakini wakitaka pia kushika. Wakuja wakatu wote. Zababu hiyo ni kazi yao, hiyo ni profession yao. <laughs> Lakini bibi tayari, niko tayari kupelekwa kotini. Ikiwa kuna kosa. According to the DPP, Governor Ojamong and his co-accused will face charges of conspiring to commit an offense of economic crime, abuse of office, engaging in a project without proper planning, and willful failure to comply with the law relating to management of funds. I want to assure Kenyans we are as clean as cotton hmm? or snow. Willie Lusige, KTN News, Busia County. Meanwhile, political players from the Upper Eastern Region have today come out to defend Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission CEO Halake Wako. Wako and the ESCC have been put on the spot following an explosive affidavit filed at the Nairobi High Court accusing Wako of frustrating and sabotaging the fight against corruption. The claimant, Eden Moro Grasha, a former intelligence officer who is fighting his interdiction by ESCC, has alleged that Halake Wako interfered with investigations into some scandals, bringing them to a premature end. Our disappointment is this we see it as high-octane politics. That has nothing to do with the uh, fight against corruption. Uh, it is just intended to injure the personality of a high-profile government official in the name of Halake Wako.
we, we clearly know the sponsors behind his ill motive. And we are saying Halake has a right to vie for any position within his Yolo county and take it from me. He has a right. And when he decides to declare his interests, we are with him 100%. But what we will not agree is a fight uh, just because he's, he's, a, he's, he's a civil servant, he cannot defend himself in social media or in, in, in the public uh, domain that somebody is sponsoring to fight him. So we want to clearly say that this has nothing to do with politics. This is Isiolo 22 politics. There will be no extension on the government deadline for foreigners to renew their work permits. That is according to Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi. Well, this means that foreigners working in Kenya have up to the 22nd of this month to verify and register their work permits. Cecilia Wakesho has the details. All foreigners working in the country now have 19 days to verify and register their work permits. Immigration employees at this special tent in Nyayo House have been on the rush to implement Matiangi's directive that runs out on 22nd July, requiring foreigners to have renewed their work permits. So far, only 18,227 people have heeded this call. We will not extend the exercise of work permit verification must be honest. It will not be extended. 22nd July is the last day. After that, we will remove from our country any illegal immigrants. Records by the Ministry of Interior show that there are close to 100,000 visitors across the country. According to Matiangi, foreigners who are in the country illegally might have to foot for their deportation expenses in future if amendments into security bill are passed by the National Assembly. The government estimates to be using up to 360 million shillings annually to deport illegal immigrants. I anticipate that if we don't clean up this exercise as we are doing it now, we are going to require to spend sometimes up to about 500 million shillings to transport uh, people out of the country. Foreigners exempted from the exercise include tourists, diplomats, foreigners working for international organizations, and students. So far, 31 fake working permits have been impounded and two brokers arrested during the process. Recently, I, I have rejected a huge number of some of these applications. They are, um, almost these days, is almost... Uh, a natural and a given. I always write declined. Cecilia Kesho, KTN News. The family of a 16-year-old girl who has gone missing from Gara Girls is tonight seeking answers. In the latest incident, bringing to fore the questions about insecurity in schools, Saadia Eden Mohammed disappeared last Wednesday and her whereabouts remain unknown. Caroline B. talked to the family and tried reaching out to the school's management over the incident, which has left the family in distress. Sadia Aden Mohammed, a Form 1 student at Tengara Girls High School in Nairobi, went missing nearly a week ago from the learning institution. According to the school's administration, she was last seen at around 5.30 p.m. on Wednesday, June 27th. The family is in anguish, questioning how their daughter could have mysteriously disappeared. They made yet another attempt to seek answers from the school's authorities. This is a family missing their child. They should tell us exactly what happened, what transpired, who was involved that day, who was the teacher on duty, when did he saw the student last. Inside the school compound, the students were on break, and at the administration office, little information was forthcoming. The deputy principal went into hiding. Immediately, she saw Sadia's family. The principal was nowhere to be found. Her calls went unanswered. As you might have left her somewhere when she went to the ministry. The only available person who attempted to speak to the media, though hesitant, was a member of the board who identified himself as Sami Muli only after pressurizing. I'm not a director. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Tell us. I'm a member. You're a member of the, yes, of the board. Sadia went missing just two days after reporting from the half-term break. The family says they brought her to school, handing her over to the school's principal, where she was confirmed and booked to continue with her second term. The matter has angered female leaders from Northeastern, who too, just like other visitors, were locked out from accessing the school premises in their efforts to seek answers. The way we are seeing, there's some fishy things going on here that we were not even allowed 
to enter the school compound. We have never had boys disappearing from school. Why only girls? That's the question we should ask. This administrator should be arrested, the board members should be arrested, and the school should be closed immediately. It was ironical that, for the better part of the day, security was beefed up with a contingent of police officers manning the school gate. Yet, none of them was available to ensure security when Sadia went missing. Sadia grew up in Garissa and only came to Nairobi as a visitor and a student, ready to start her secondary education. The case reveals how poor as safety measures in schools are. Investigations into the case are ongoing, with the family hopeful, though agonized, about the well-being of their daughter. It is the seventh day Sadia has been reported missing, and this incident sheds a spotlight on the security situation in our schools. Just how safe are school-going children in their learning institutions? Caroline B., KTN News.